Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A wild ride through Macomb County after a man is carjacked at gunpoint. Get on the ground! For pursuit, for pursuit! Black that driver had his Jeep Grand Cherokee stolen, but luckily was not hurt when the carjackers shot at him. What happened next was captured on body camera. Let's get right to Mara McDonald. She's live at Mount Clemens at the Macomb County Jail, Mara. Hi, Kimberly. Tonight you have got a man and a woman locked up here at the Macomb County Jail. And in the dash cam that you're about to see, notice that it's the woman behind the wheel of this carjacked Jeep. Take a look. It was Chesterfield police who originally spotted that carjack Jeep flying down I-94 and gave pursuit. When it turned onto Hall Road, Macomb County deputies joined the chase. As you can see, the woman behind the wheel had no intention of stopping. Ramming a squad car and then continuing to run. Once police finally stopped the Jeep, both the woman behind the wheel and the man she was with in the passenger seat took off in the snow. For pursuit, for pursuit. Black male reached in his pockets. Get out of the ground. The man ultimately stops. Police find two guns on him. The woman who was behind the wheel had no weapons. Turns out this duo isn't even from Michigan, but Mississippi. Luckily, the man whose Jeep was stolen wasn't hit by the shots fired at him, and none of the deputies were injured, but some squad cars pretty banged up. Back here live tonight, the Macomb County prosecutor has leveled a bucket full of charges at both of these two, including assault with intent to murder. They're being held here at the Macomb County Jail on a $300,000 cash bond. We're live in Mount Clemens tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Wow, okay. Mara, thank you. The complaints of foul chemical odors coming from the Mac assembly plant where Stellantis makes the Jeep Grand Cherokee have been coming consistently since July of last summer. Tonight, the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy hosted a virtual meeting to discuss those complaints and talk about what's being done. Jason Coltharp at the plant tonight where changes are in store. Jason. Yeah, there are some changes coming, Devin, uh, after five violations here. However, that doesn't carry much water with the people who live around here until they know for sure that their sore throats, burning throats, burning eyes, even asthma attacks are going to stop because of the odors here. In a virtual meeting Thursday, Eagle announced Stellantis has a three-part plan to fix four odor violations and one for improper ductwork here at the Mac assembly plant. Part of the presentation featured a toxicologist with MDHHS who reviewed air samples. Of 20 unique chemicals detected, eight are used at the MAC plant, and all were below a short-term or long-term health risk. Still, Eagle, the EPA, and MDHHS admit there isn't enough data to positively say there isn't a health concern meaning more tests are needed. You guys are using something that's useless for the people over here to make these assessments. And you're already saying that you don't have all the information, but you keep telling people they're safe. And then there's chemicals that you can't even, um, you can't detect or you don't test for, but you're telling people they're safe. That doesn't make common sense. I'm no scientist, but that doesn't make common sense. Neighbors who have been voicing their concerns for six months or more are clearly beyond frustrated. How it's okay for you all to kind of underscore or, or sign off on Stellantis' statements that there are no health risks when you've all stated that there's not data to do that. I guess that that's my question. You don't seem to be concerned about the health impacts. You seem to be focusing on the smell and not the fact that eyes are burning, that throats are sore. And those are neighbors you heard from there. And the member of the MDHHS, the toxicologist that was on this meeting tonight, responded directly to what you just heard, saying odors, strange odors, foul odors are not going to be acceptable. Neither are health concerns. And that's why they're going to be doing more testing. They're going to monitor what Stellantis is doing, and they're going to have future meetings to keep people in the loop on what happens. Devin? Jason, we know from our past reporting on this, a lot of the residents in the area want to see uh, Stellantis hit with penalties for what's happened. And that will happen. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, Eagle right now is crafting that, uh, putting it together, that will have penalties for the five violations it's already had and uh, penalties for any future violations. So we'll see where it goes, yeah. but they want to make sure it has teeth. Sure. You, you bet. All right, Jason.
Well, we can see there from Jason's uh, live yeah. report, <laughs> snowflakes flying across the area. Looks like shift change was there uh, as we uh, first got to him as well. Uh, Paul, but more Arctic cold, we just can't get out of it. Yeah, we have another uh, couple of days of that stuff, and then we're going to start milding out a bit. But right now, we're looking at a band of snow, actually a couple of bands. This is the cold front itself. We'll talk more about that in about uh, 10, 15 minutes. And then this band, Jason, is right there. So you can see this is the primary band here. So uh, in Wayne County, it's right along I-94 from the Gross Point, uh, down river here through uh, Allen Park, across the Taylor and Romulus, and then into uh, Washtenaw County, where it's generally south of 94, heading through Ypsilanti, Saline, approaching Milan just to the south there. So this is just transient stuff. This is going to be coming through over the next uh, couple of hours, and then uh, we should be seeing it wind down for the rest of the night. Temps still in the 20s as expected. It wasn't going to fall fast uh, ahead of that cold front, but wind chills are generally in the teens to around 20 degrees. Now, for the kids at the bus stop tomorrow, morning bus stop, it's going to be around uh, zero or a little above in the south and east, a little below zero for a wind chill to the north and west. And then for the afternoon bus stop, it's pretty much upper single digits to around 10 degrees. So it is going to be a very cold day tomorrow, and there's more of that coming, especially tomorrow night. So we'll talk about all of that and the big storm out east coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Paul, two new developments to bring you tonight in the Oxford school shooting. We're learning about a new defense strategy for the teen charged in the shooting and a new lawsuit. Families are suing some Oxford school administrators, teachers, counselors, and Ethan Crumbly's parents. Their attorney says the Michigan protection law required all of them to flag Ethan's behavior. The shooting left four people dead, including Tate Meir, whose father explained how the tragedy has changed their lives. We're not doing good. All we do is walk around the house and think about Tate. He we think about him every day. We sit in his room. We listen to his playlist off of Spotify. We miss him. Justin and Tate's family. Chad and Megan Gregory have also joined the lawsuit. Their 15-year-old son, Keegan, survived the shooting, but they say he's traumatized as another student was gunned down right next to him. Meanwhile, the attorneys representing Ethan Crumbly will pursue an insanity defense. The notice was filed today. It should lead to mental health exams for Crumbly, who's charged as an adult with murder as well as other crimes. Tonight, a manhunt underway for a murder suspect in East Point. Police say a man and a woman were found with gunshot wounds near an apartment on 10 Mile, just west of Gratiot. The man died. The woman was taken to the hospital. We uh, await word on her condition as uh, well as we await word on what led to the shooting. But police, we do know, are looking for 61-year-old Dennis Evans, believed to be driving a 2019 black Kia Optima. And there's the license plate number, Michigan plate EBH 5813, EBH5813. A Highland Park police detective charged with selling drugs while on the job now faces up to 40 years in prison. 46-year-old Tiffany Lipkovich has pleaded guilty to selling fentanyl-laced heroin. She was charged last year after she was caught on surveillance video taking money in a drug deal while in uniform. Lipkovich has been with Highland Park police since 2011. Her accomplice also pleaded guilty. Detroit police announcing an update tonight in the investigation into a gas station shooting that killed a 15-year-old boy. Police say they are questioning a person of interest. We're told a gunman met with 15-year-old Robert Harris at a gas station on 7 Mile on the city's west side to settle social media beef. The gunman then shot and killed Harris. Police say the investigation is still active and they're asking anyone with information to come forward. Today, Michigan House approves more pandemic grants for businesses. Yeah, businesses impacted by the pandemic will receive state grants under a $185 million spending bill that won initial legislative approval. That vote comes more than a month after the legislature and Governor Whitmer enacted $409 million in aid for businesses that lost money. Applications for those grants are due by April 1st. The state's also going to hand out $10 million free KN95 masks to better help people protect themselves from the Omicron variant. And let's note that doctors from Henry Ford Hospital say the number of people with COVID being admitted to their hospitals now dropping. As we head into the final days of January, everyone here at Henry Ford is starting to see some encouraging signs over the past week, including a decrease in the number of COVID-19 positive patients admitted to our hospitals 
and a decline in the overall positivity rate in our community. Uh, despite the improvement, Dr. Cunningham says everyone needs to get vaccinated and boosted to protect themselves from COVID.